Well, I grew up in the seventies, playing sports and eating Wheaties. I always loved to watch the Cubbies play. I also dreamed of the NBA. I knew a little football, like a wide receiver. I didn't know a touchback from a legal procedure. Soccer hadn't caught on like it has today, but we watch wrestling every Saturday. Pete Rose was Charlie Hustle back then, when not as many people hated him in the NFL. The best was the juice on the Olympic team. Bruce was still Bruce. In the ring was Muhammad Ali, and he could float like a butterfly, and he could sting like a bee. Oh my, my time blows like the wind, and I want to go back to the 70s again. The Pacers then were in the ABA, and that hometown boy McGinnis, well, he could play. The Summer Olympics was always groovy, Leon Spinks could fight, but he was no beauty. And how could you forget the big red machine with Bench and Rose and Morgan and Perez and Foster and Griffey and Concepcion and Pedro Bamor and Bill Plummer and Daryl Chaney and Geronimo, oh what a team. Well, my favorite player was not a red at all. He wore cubby blue, Jose Cardinal. Pete Rose was Charlie Hustle back then, when not as many people hated him in the NFL. The best was the juice on the Olympic team. Bruce was still Bruce. In the ring was Muhammad Ali, and he could blow like a butterfly, and he could sting like a bee. Oh my, my time blows like the wind And I want to go back to the 70s again Oh greedy Pete, he bet on the game With his lying and cheating, there'll be no Hall of Fame Some really bad choices, caught up with the juice And I'll tell you man, I can barely recognize old Bruce Muhammad Ali fought his last fight On June 4th, 16, on a Friday night Pete Rose was Charlie Hustle back then When not as many people hated him in the NFL The best was the juice on the Olympic team Bruce was still Bruce In the ring was Muhammad Ali And he could flow like a butterfly And he could sting like a bee Oh my, my time blows like the wind And I wanna go back to the 70s again And oh my, my time blows like the wind I wanna go back to the 70s again yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Welcome to Mosaic Minds Podcast. Today we have Rich Dowell with us. This is our very first in-studio guest. Normally we have the, the Zoom um, interviews that we do. So... Uh, Jason knows Rich from Pickleball, so I'm going to let Jason kind of introduce him. I've known Rich now for a couple of years. Uh, he's a crowd favorite, uh, good attitude on the court and off the court. Has a nice local following here in the Hendricks County, Indianapolis area. Uh, plays in various venues throughout the city and uh, definitely educated in music, definitely educated in life. Uh, very, very kind individual and uh just fun to be around so we're very excited to have you in the studio today and uh, just kind of introduce yourself a little bit more than what i just did there for you okay and uh kind of an open mic setting okay well thanks thanks jason thanks for in introducing me that was very nice well i'm a music teacher i teach elementary school music grades three through five and i'm also a musician and a songwriter and i've got a bunch of shows coming up in june and i like to play pickleball I like to run, and uh, and I like the Cubs. All right, All right. go Cubbies! <laughs> and he, you were saying earlier that you um, you play in a trio with your son, and you right. also play with your son right. separately, right? Yeah, right. So so I do solo shows, 
And I also do shows with my son. My son, Brandon, is a percussionist, so he plays cajon and snare drum and djembe and whatever else I can get him to play, but those are the three main instruments he plays. And then I also play shows with a trio that's called Roger, Me, and B, and I am me. And <laughs> Roger's my friend, Roger Osmer, who plays bass. And then my son is a percussionist for that group as well. We only play one venue. We play at the Side Door Pub in Plainfield. And we have a show on June 15th on a Saturday from 8 till 11. Yeah, I saw. I got your invite on Facebook. Oh, good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. But I have a show every Saturday in June. Okay. And my son and I are at the Books and Brews in Brownsburg on... Saturday, June 8th. That's the one from I got. 7 to 9. That's the one I got, the Books and Brews one, yeah. Okay, what kind of music do you, like, what would you can consider your uh, the genre of your band, or is it covers, or what, what do you guys do? Well, I, in all three of the acts, there's a mix of originals and covers, and so the originals are my songs, which are, I described it as humorous folk and I also have some songs that are more serious, but most of them are lighthearted. And then we do a, a variety of covers. We do some Irish tunes. I really like Irish music. And some Beatles and a pretty wide mix of, of other stuff. Irish music is cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever go to the Nine Irish Brothers downtown? And I have not been there. I have not been there. They have a. It's actually it's funny. It's actually. A, I've heard they a have Scottish Irish band. music, but they, yeah, but they have they actually have a Scottish band that plays there a lot called Highland Rain, and and they. Uh, I mean, I know that's not Irish, but yeah, they they usually every yeah, St. Oh, Patty's I'd, Day. I'd love it though. Yeah. I just really like how your uh, your music kind of tells a story for me. Knowing those names in the seventies, what what kind of gives you your inspiration for some of the tunes that you sing on the original side of the house? Oh, that's a good question. I, I write a lot of songs that are nostalgic, so things that that mean a lot to me. And so that that '70s song was was pretty easy to write because it was about stuff that that I remember very well, and and I miss it. And 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 other other songs that I have just kind of come. It could just be a phrase. Um, one time I was talking to somebody and she talked about, I said, I got some cheese balls. She said, Oh, it has a purple lid. Right. And, and then I just kind of, it just kind of came like that. <laughs> was a great big thing. A cheese balls was a great big thing. A cheese balls with a nifty purple lid with a nifty purple lid. Ate a big old thing of cheese balls, ate a big old thing of cheese balls, and my fingers said I did, my fingers said I did, they're all covered in orange, and nothing rhymes with orange. So anyway, so that just, um, <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's just one line, is a purple lid, it's a, it's a great big thing, old cheese balls with a nifty purple lid. Do you like yeah. par- you like a parody song? Do you like I, one? I've done some parodies. Um, yeah, I, I I I don't write parodies as much as I used to, but um, uh, I've got one. Um, let's see. All right, this is the Beatles parody. I'll just play the beginning of it. It's called "If the Beatles Were from Indiana." <laughs> He's a Morgan County man strutting around in a farmer town. Played sousaphone in the marching band, I'm told. He doesn't smoke, but he likes to chew, and his breath smells like doggy do. Isn't he a bit like me and you? Anyway, so that's there, there are different Beatles songs in that medley. I think that's uh, I think that's inspirational because you know like I look for diversification and talent. I think the fact that you can tell a story, do something serious, play with your family. I mean that's got to that's got to be awesome. I played a lot of sports with dad, and I, I'll bet you that's enjoyable. Talk to me a little bit about your venues in which you get to play with family. How special that is being up on the stage in front oh, of people. Oh, it's it's great. It's great doing shows with my son and and uh, and I got to meet Jason's dad actually on just just a couple of nights ago. Um, so yeah, it's a, it, I have a lot of friends that come out and I have groups of friends from pickleball and groups of friends from, from music, other 
songwriters and performers, musicians. Um, and, and sometimes I have some family come out to see me play and, 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 but it's, it's real nice to have that, to have that, uh, bond with my son and, and yeah, so he's, he's great, great musician. He's very intuitive and, and we have a lot of fun doing it together. Did he grow up, grow up playing and grow, and all that? I mean, well, he was a saxophone player. So, okay. so he joined the band in sixth grade and was an alto sax player. And, and then throughout high school, he gravitated more towards percussion, but he was really active in the marching band and the winter, winter drum line. And well, yeah. let's talk a little bit about your, uh, your, your teaching. I always thought right. that would be an amazing job to teach element music to elementary school kids. So, uh, you got, I bet you have a lot of them, but do you have any, uh, any good stories, uh, any that you can tell anyway that, um, you know, about some of the kids or, or even something inspirational, you know, that, that you feel like you played a part in with, with some of the children? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's been my job for 19 years. I'm at a school, Indian Creek Intermediate in Trafalgar, and 19 years in, and hopefully have several left to go here. And uh, the kids are great. They are energetic, and and the performances are are very um, are, are a big part of what I do. And 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 so I I I really enjoy taking the time and to put it into, but it's the kids, they really, they make it worth it on the night of the performance. And, and we got a brand new performing arts center in Indian Creek schools. And so we had a Christmas program this year in the new facility and the kids did great. And, and, and we did a, a spring program. The fifth grade did a spring program. The third and fourth did the, the winter program and the fifth grade spring program was schoolhouse rock oh, that's and so cool. yeah so if you know me just a bill i'm just yeah yeah i played that yesterday <laughs> at, at uh, hopwood winery uh, let's see i'm just a bill yes i'm only a bill and i'm sitting here on capitol hill <laughs> but so anyway um the the performances are great and and just day in day out and and kids telling me you know hey I get you got a, I got a Beatles album and and uh, and I saw uh, I saw a video of Louis Armstrong and so exposure is a big thing with me is trying to expose the students to a wide range of styles of music and and with me it's probably not hard to figure out everything goes back to the seventies kind of. <laughs> Hey, I mean, that's one of the best eras, right? So. Hey, I'm jealous, man. I, I'm fascinated with that era of music. Uh, kind of a random question for you here, Rich. Have okay. you uh, have you heard the song, the Edmund Fitzgerald? Yeah, I have, I have, and and I've someone has requested it more than once, so I learned it and I played it just a couple times. And I like it, and it's kind of the story t- storytelling kind of thing that I like to do, and uh, and the fact that it's historical too. So I, yeah, I like that song. As a nine or ten year old, my dad used to play that and used to sing it for me. So I just wanted to mention that, but that reminded me of you because you're telling a story along with your lyrics, and you can kind of see a specific snapshot in time with that, kind of like a Polaroid picture of that era. And there's so something I think that's ab- interesting. There's something about the rhythm of that song that kind of fits in with some other songs that I do. Well, before we completely jump off of the, uh, the school, the teacher thing. Yeah. So, um, you've got to get a little bit of pleasure knowing that you're the one that gets to send the recorders home with (laughs) with the children, right? I mean, come on, let's, let's be honest now. Okay. (laughs) Okay. It's funny. It's so funny you say that because I do a keyboard unit in fifth grade and I don't always teach recorder. And this year, there were a bunch of fourth graders who who needed stuff to do in the afternoon of the last day. A lot of the students went home half day with their parents. They had a big picnic. And so they came into my room and, and needed stuff to do. And, and one of the students found in a cabinet, hey, could I have one of those? <laughs> and I had a bunch of them in my cabinet. They'd been there for, for over 20 years. And uh, so, so, you know, I... I'm not using these. Okay, you can have one. 
So then every fourth grader still left came to my door at some point wanting a recorder. And then all the teachers thanked me for that because then they walked out to the buses all playing their recorders with no instruction or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. My parents say they can still remember hot cross buns. Oh, yeah. Like it, yeah. yeah you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. One time I moved into my house in 2000 and I'm out on the patio and, and I could hear a, a a kid playing hot cross buns on a recorder, like a house from me, like he was bouncing on a trampoline and playing it at the same time. So give him a recorder and a kazoo and you know, you got a one man band, right? <laughs> Rich, I'm going to take a shot. We're going to segue into maybe your second tune, if you will. Okay. Good. Um, just real quick, just to give you some time. Uh, Howard Cosell, um, Casey Kasem, and then I'm even going to throw a funny one in, Delilah. Which one of the three would you say have done the most for music or the most uh, sentimental, I guess, to the music industry? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Um, so that'd be more like the, more broadcasting, right? Yeah, right. I, the, the one that, that I identify with more or just remember more is Casey Kasem. I remember listening to the top 40 and gosh, and I think when I was as old as like 16, my brother and I worked at a pool, Elks Club pool, and it would, it was on Sundays, I think, the top 40 countdown. So, so we would write down the, you couldn't look stuff up on the internet, you know, so you had to write things down. And so we'd keep a list of, of the top 40. And, and so if I'd go on break, then he would continue the list and. But yeah, but but much earlier than that, much younger than that, I remember, I remember listening to that. And with that being said, we're gonna go with song number two. Okay, let's do it. Okay, this song means a lot to uh, Jason and me. Oh, I should see a doctor. I've had a bad cough for a week. Or call the plumber to fix the bathroom leak. And it's time to get the oil changed on the minivan And I need to adjust my 401k plan The leaves on the front lawn need raked and put in bags Maybe I should join the gym right now, my belly sags Oh, there's so much I need to do And fix, replace, or clean But who cares, the Cubs won in 16 when the Cubs took Game 7, said Ernie in heaven, for once there's no need to play to. And Schwarber was able, and he set the tables, so Brist and Montero came through. Alamora, Bryant, and Rizzo, they were part of the rally as well. And it's been a long wait since 1908. And think of the stories we'll tell Maybe I should appear on a podcast And cross that off my bucket list Or go back to school and be a musicologist Oh, I need a new hobby like collecting Burl Ives records Or start a game night with Ralph And play Atari Lawn charts and checkers Oh, there's such I, much I need to do before the day I die But who cares, the Cubs beat the tribe When the Cubs took Game 7, said Ernie in heaven For once there's no need to play to And Schwarber was able and he set the table So Brist and Montero came through Alamora, Bryant, and Rizzo They were part of the rally as well And it's been a long wait since 1908 And think of the stories we'll tell Oh, it's been a long wait since 1908 And think of the stories we'll tell We'll tell the stories we'll tell Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> heartwarming. I think the I think the bow on that World Series win was when Bryant, you know, threw out that guy for the very last out. He he kind of slipped. I mean, even he'll say that you know he's back on his heels. He could have airmailed that, and we would have been right back to you know talking ten years from now that we hadn't won one. So very right, very very good song. I was getting cold chills as you were singing because whenever we say the Cubs <laughs> won the World Series, is just 
is just awesome. But yeah, so. that moment, you'll never forget that moment. The, the little dribblers hit and, and a big smile on Chris Bryant's face. But then he, there was a little slip there. But then, and then Rizzo just, he, yeah, they were all on fire. That was just a great moment. My son used to rewatch some of those scenes on YouTube over and over and over again. And he bought a sticker that said, I was a Cubs fan before they won the World Series. <laughs> now, Rich, you got to agree with me here, and I'm going to take a stab in the dark, but I think I, I think you're going to agree with me here. I miss hearing Mel Allen with this week in baseball. Oh, Remember yeah. That? Uh-huh. I Remember do. That? Uh-huh. That was my thing because growing up where I grew up, I didn't get national televised games, so I was I was very interested in all the highlights from that week's baseball, so I think that's – I think that's very interesting. Yeah, that was cool. That was really cool because it was before ESPN, right? Yep, and, you exactly. Know, yeah. So, so when you know, normally with musicians, we would ask, you know, who who's your inspiration? But I'm not sure to ask if it would be someone more like uh, somebody from the '70s or like uh, a Weird Al Yankovic kind of thing. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so right. What, right, what, right, what, right what direction? Right. What direction would I go there? Well, <laughs> I'm a big Beatles fan, and. And also the the music humor, um, and I, I listened to Weird Al. I mean, I, I mean everybody did. Everybody knew sure. some of his songs. Um, and Irish music. I think if I did kind of pick three influences, I'd say music humor in a in the broad sense of it, and and uh, Irish music and and Beatles. Okay, all right, very cool. Rich, in normal life or in normal inspiration for music, explain to me how you take a topic and actually bring it to the mic versus, well, it was a cool topic, but after thinking a little bit about it, I'm going to do something different. How do you kind of make your playlist or eliminate some stuff, and I'm going to let you expound upon that. Okay. Well, when I write a song, I start with the title with the hook. And so so what's what is what's the song about it's it's so that's going to be the hook and then so i'll try to to pound out a strong chorus and and so if that all goes well then the rest is is pretty easy i think i think i think the hard part is to get that topic and and so this is this is the hook this is what the song's going to be about and and that's what people are going to remember. You remember songs by the chorus, and then 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 write the whole chorus, get the whole chorus, get that in good shape, and then start working on the verses. So the verses are 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 sort of the kind of the tedious part of it, but but it's 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 kind of like uh, doing a research paper, and, and you, you, now you have to you have to, you know what the, the main topic is going to be, and you know yeah you know the big major points you want to make and now you have to support it with details so that's that's what the verses are all about and and, and rhyming i mean so, uh, i will use uh i'll use some some searches some 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 apps and that that you know okay what rhymes with this and this and this and that kind of speeds up a little bit yeah so so you start with we you start with other than the title you start with the music and then you write the lyrics and you see you kind of hear it well i write i kind of do the lyrics and the 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 melody at the same time that's always been hard for me i'd love to be able to write songs i can i can write a poem and then i can all that but i can't as far as putting it to music you know like covers are I, fine but I, I start out with the with the idea and 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 then i try to get get some musical idea out of that and and uh but I, but I, I don't start with like a melody or with a chord progression, and and a lot of people write that way. I think I've written a couple songs like that. Now, Rich, but, uh, I know you from pickleball, which the crowd well knows. But pickleball is more of a tactician game than a lot of people think. But what I'm going to say is, is I think it's cool how you're a tactician of it, and when you're singing it, you get excited, and it's almost like you're naturally smiling, you're naturally engaged, and it seems like you're building up momentum throughout the songs. Uh, outside looking in, not being a, uh, that's not my wheelhouse to be honest with you, but I, I really enjoy the passion. I really enjoy the storytelling. I just uh, think overall, it's just interesting to listen to. It's not just your run of the mill, but then it would be cool also to hear, you know, a, a, uh, 
you know, a song X, Y, Z. You know, when you're at a, a bar playing or a restaurant or whatever, or even, even out with friends, you know, they hear the kind of songs you, you play. Mm-hmm. Do you ever have friends or, you know, patrons come up and suggest certain topics that they want you to, to do a song on? Yeah, that sometimes that happens. And sometimes it'll be something funny that just happened and, and they'll say, hey, are you going to write a song about this? And, and there was one time when I was with my younger son and we were going to the Dairy Queen and it was a community night in Plainfield. And so we got up there and a friend of mine saw me and he kind of stopped me from going in and he said, hey, hey, don't even bother. They're out of everything. They're out of cones. They're out of bowls. They're out of ice cream. And 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 so he said, Let, let's just let's just take off. Are you taking the trail? I said, yeah, we took the trail. So so we're walking back, and my friend says, "Hey, you're gonna write a song about this, aren't you? You're write a song about Dairy Queen not having any ice cream." And and, uh, and and I wasn't thinking that way. And 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 so he continued to walk, and 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 then he said, uh, "He said, do you walk this trail often?" I said, "Yeah, we we walk it pretty often, and and we go to Franklin Park from the trail and walk to the rec center, and 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 uh, we probably were on it you know yesterday and the day before that and he said well i walk it a few times every day and 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 i've seen a lot of wildlife on the trail have you seen much wildlife on the trail and i said well yeah i don't know i mean maybe squirrel or something he said oh i've seen lots of stuff i i saw an elk i saw a venomous duck and a wolverine and and uh, kangaroos and 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 then he said and one time this is all in plain field and he said and one time i saw a, a turtle and 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 I went and and ran an errand and and got back on the trail, came home, and that turtle was on the trail still, still, and it only gone like ten feet. And I said, Jim, you son of a gun, that's a song. Do you mind if I play it? Go for it. Okay. Make it happen. All right. Tony the turtle. Well, I've known him for years. He always seems to use just one of his gears. And I first met Tony on the walking trail with his high shoulders and his great big shell. People passed him by like he was just standing still. It took him most of the morning just to get up that hill. And he takes his house everywhere that he goes. He's never had a job. He has one set of clothes. The snails like to ride upon his back And every single time the snails do that The snails yell out with beer and glee It sounds like this inevitably We Go Tony, go, go, go The land and sea hobo Well he's kinda like old Nick Cause he takes his own sweet time He's kind of like old Jason, he never gave me a dime. Well, like my desk, he's smooth underneath, like little tiny babies doesn't have many teeth. He sure likes to swim and hunt for fish and such. And he might bite your finger, but he never says too much. And he takes his house everywhere that he goes He's never had a job, he has one set of clothes The snails like to ride upon his back And every single time the snails do that The snails yell out with fear and glee And it sounds like this inevitably We Go Tony, go, go, go The land and sea hobo Go Tony, go, 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 go The land and sea hobo Go get him Tony! Are, are, I was losing my <laughs> headphones on that one. Are, are you a Friends fan? The show Friends? Yeah, yeah. So so you probably can really appreciate Phoebe. You probably really like Phoebe, right? And her, oh, and her songwriting. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> can yeah. you bust out some smelly it's, cat? You know, like... <laughs> that's funny. I mean, because, yeah, I take... That's that's a good... Going from Tony the Turtle to... Smelly cat. Smelly cat, cat yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, can, that song came from that idea. There's this turtle on the trail... And then, you know, alliteration is always good. So, okay, the turtle's name's going to be Tony. It's not going to be Bill, you know, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think this is one of the coolest formats we've had because not only are you in, in studio, but you're just, 
you're just easy to talk to. It's almost like we've we've rehearsed and had this before. Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, I thought it was, it's it's great. Yeah, I've never done a podcast, and you have to come back yeah. and uh, and and maybe be a, a co-host for us too. Oh, sometime. okay. Why not? Right? Okay. Maybe yeah. if we ever if we things get like are a, happening here. Yeah. And, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> We're making pl- we got plans. We got big plans. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you being on the show, and uh, we will definitely. You were talking about your events. I'll make sure we put them up on the oh, uh, cool on YouTube and on um, yeah on the yeah. show notes and all that. So, but do you, any anything that's coming up? The mo- is the the books and brew the most recent that's the one? most recent one. That's next Saturday, June eighth. Okay. So, yeah. Rich, I own a bar and grill hypothetically here in um, I was going to say you do thirty mile radius of Indianapolis. I wish I did be some free food, right? I like to eat, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, if I want to book you or get in touch with you, social media or personally, how do I, uh, lack a better term, book a gig with you? Oh, that's that's a great question, and uh, let's talk more about your hypothetical uh, bar and grill here. But anyway, um, so I'm on Insta, Twitter, Book Space. No, actually, I'm on. Facebook, Facebook, Rich Dowell, and you can send me a friend request. And if you could, and if you could put in the, you know, maybe maybe a message message and say that I'm interested in your music and and uh, can you see a play and 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 so anyway, just send me a friend request, Rich Dowell, on Facebook, and uh, and then I'll get with Nick about have about plugging the shows more. Well, it goes without being said, but I got I gotta have at least one uh, one send off for you. So I'm gonna do a famous Cubs announcer. Okay, okay. It's not Jack Brickhouse, but it's, it's Harry uh, Carey. Yeah, I was gonna say that's so right. Black when I was young, I could get two hot dogs for a nickel. After the seventh inning, I get a little tipsy. But go <laughs> Cubs, go. Go Cubs, go. All right, Harry, put the drink down. <laughs> it was That's fun, Rich. Good. You did, Very you did good. an excellent job, no, Rich. That, that was the I'm icing proud. on the cake. That was good, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very enjoyable. You did an excellent job, and uh, we're glad to have Thanks you Thanks so much. Thanks for yeah. having me. Please come back. Be sure to check out Rich Dow Live this Saturday, June 22nd from 2 to 4 p.m. at Just Love Coffee in Carmel at 12525 Old Meridian. And then again the following Saturday, June 29th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Herman Bruthers Beer Works in Indianapolis on the west side, 7811 West Morris Street. We will, of course, put all this in the show notes, or you can check out his personal Facebook page. His name is spelled R-I-C-H-D-O-W-E-L-L.